I would like to show you how to use Long Exposure Stacker version 1.5. This is the way the application starts up. It presents an open panel to you. I'm going to select these nine raw images. It presents me with the raw settings that I can adjust, but these are the settings I want to use. I'll just hit done. Carriage return would have worked just fine there. So now it's reading the nine raw files and converting them to a usable internal form. And we're done. In the simplest possible usage, where the camera is very steady on a tripod, at this point we just say composite. We composite the nine images, and this is our final result. We can choose from several options here. This is mean, this is a mean composition. We take the average at each pixel. We can take the mean with outliers removed. You can see, if you look over here, let's zoom in on that. Uh, mean. We've taken some of this ghosting from these higher splashes out when we go to the mean outliers removed. If we had more images, uh, this would look smoother. We were only working with nine here, but for something like this, something fast moving like this, and where we have a fairly high shutter speed, it would not be unreasonable to go to a hundred or more images to try and get smooth out these waves. Uh, we have these choices. We can work through them and you can find the one that you like the best. Max is kind of unusual in that it is the brightest at each uh, pixel and it makes the water in this case look very mean. And we can also take the min makes the water look somewhat calmer and lower. Uh, so back up here, mean outliers removed, and we could save that. It gives us the name of the first image in the stack and the name of the composition algorithm we're using, and we can say save. And that's the simplest possible usage of Long Exposure Stacker. It works really great for smoothing water, smoothing waterfalls, and it reduces noise at the same time. So you can now uh, take the resulting image into your favorite image editing tool and brighten the dark areas to your heart's content. And if you have enough images, you will never see any noise. So that's good as a start, but there's another thing we can do, and that's this optional alignment. Sometimes your tripod is set up on a sandy beach and it moves ever so slightly every time a big wave comes in. So the images aren't perfectly aligned. Or sometimes you're in a situation where you have to handhold because tripods aren't allowed. You can't use a flash because flashes aren't allowed. So you have to use a high ISO, but you don't want to use a high ISO because then there'll be too much noise. So you can shoot a burst of short exposures at high ISO handheld and then align them. Or in this case, you can align them because the tripod is slowly sinking into the sand. And what you do is you paint, you select the optional alignment, and then you paint with blue those things that are not moving. So these big rocks aren't moving, right? So you can paint those. I should use a larger brush. I don't need such a small brush. I'm using the square bracket keys to change the size, but there's also a slider over here. Uh, bigger still. This whole hillside, that's not moving. This rock isn't moving, right? So we can just go through and paint things that aren't moving. I'm going to have to go to a smaller brush. And that's not moving. This is, has the odd wave splashing over it. And so there's things moving on it. That's not so good. Now you can see here where originally this was a composite button. It's now a line in composite. So we will align and composite our images. And now we've compensated for the fact that our tripod was moving. And I've seen this used very effectively for uh, handheld images shot as a short burst. There's one more thing I'd like to show you here. I can open this panel, exclude images, and now I can use this menu to find a specific image, or I can use the previous and next keys, or I can use the arrow keys on the keyboard to change the image. And what I'm doing here is I'm looking for an image that I want to exclude because 
Maybe I don't like the splash, the way the, the waves splash over a specific rock in the background, or someone walked through the, the image, or a car drove through the image. I can find the image, and then I can exclude the image. Or Load I can up your put images. the image back in. Using option, optionally, you can align and include all. Or I can Optionally, exclude, all. exclude specific and images. If I exclude and everything, then, then there's nothing composite. to composite. So that in the simplest case, closed, let's go back. You would just load up your images, and exclude this and composite image, and then save the and Now result. I can realign and composite and save my image. So in general, the workflow is for the simplest case, you just load up your images and composite and save the result. Alignment might be necessary if your camera moved during the capture. And in that case, you load your images, draw your mask, align and composite. And if you want, if there's an image that has a problem in it or a small number of images that have specific problems, you can exclude those specific images from your composition. And that's long exposure stacker.